On the agenda tonight, we're going back to the late 80s. We're going to be taking a look at Nancy Griffith, and she's going to be performing Listen to the Radio. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus, and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get Nancy and the full band up on screen and see how she gets on. Well, these Delta towns they were satin gals in a hobby and frame. Loretta Lynn guides my hands to the radio. We would have been times like these without the song the Ritter Road. Cause when you can't find a friend, she got the radio. But when you can't find a friend, she got the radio. As always, the link to this video is going to be in the description below, so you guys can watch it again there if you want to. But these kind of performances where the singer-songwriter just starts up with their guitar and then the full band come in one by one, it's such a great sign of a top band. Just being able to lock into that groove and the rhythm that Nancy's laying down in the intro, none of the band missing a beat here. And by the way, Nancy's playing with a thumb pick here, so you can just play this with a pick at home if you want to. The reason that Nancy's using that thumb pick is that she uses fingerstyle techniques 
technique as well when she does play with other compositions, so it leaves those other fingers free in order for that side of things. In this particular performance, we don't have any finger style, but we do have a little bit of a breakdown three quarters of the way through the song, and this is what you'll tend to find happen when there is a song that just has the same chords repeated. By the way, here, we've just got a G, a C add nine, and a D when we are relating it to your standard chord shapes at the bottom of the guitar. Because we're on the second fret here with the capo, it means that those won't be the chords. You have to shift them all up by a tone. But when you've got just three chords, Keeping the interest the whole time is going to be more of a challenge and this is why we go off into a bit of a piano solo but also have that dynamic breakdown where the instruments then drop out a little bit and this is where pretty much you'd have your mid late or your bridge, just a separate section of the song halfway, generally three quarters of the way through the song, that is a different chord progression to then take you to see a different site on your journey, but then you return back to a familiar place of a chorus by the end of the song. So just to show you guys the chords, but also the rhythm being applied here, we're playing our G shape, and because the capo is on the second fret, that'll make this an A, but I'll describe it as if we are playing a G, a C add nine as well which is a really easy chord to get to from your G because you just move your first and your second finger down to the next strings and just compensate with that right hand so that you now strum from the A string and miss out that low E string. As you can see, I'm muting that low E string with my thumb just to make sure that if I do hit it, that you don't hear it ringing out. And also the D, that's the other chord. There's only three chords in this song. so. What Nancy does do occasionally is throw in a sus4, which is just placing your little finger on the third fret of the high E string. And you'll get that sound. Also a sus2, which is taking off your second finger. And then you can hear that high E string ringing out. And that kind of thing. happens just before the turnaround. Also, the D. You might hear it like that as well, going to the sus2, back to your D shape, adding in the sus4, then changing over to the G. So that is it. When you get into the chorus, we're now starting on the C add nine. going C add 9, G and D. When we get into the rhythm, what you want to focus on here really is having our strum of the root note like that. So hopefully you can hear the root note just pop out before the rest of the strumming comes in. And if I was going That's absolutely fine as well, but Nancy does tend to just get that root note to pop out a little bit. So going, hitting that bottom part of your chord first, and then supplying the rest of that rhythm pattern with the right hand. When you then move down to the C add nine, same principle there. You wanna try and find these strings within your strumming motion. So when I'm going, you can see there that I've picked out that A string and because my low E string is muted, I can even hit that low E string, but you're not gonna hear it. You're only gonna hear the root note of the C add nine chord, like that. It also sounds like Nancy is sometimes throwing in a little bit more of the strumming pattern and a little bit less. So when we start throwing in more, as long as you keep that right hand going, then you can just put in as much or as little as you want. It'll always be in time. So putting in a little bit more, we get. And you get that kind of sound to it as well. It's just gonna drive things forward. Here, because we've got the full band, it's not gonna be as important to drive it all forward with just your rhythm playing, because we'll have other instruments coming in and helping along with that rhythm. But that's pretty much the guitar. The only thing that Nancy does, which is slightly different, is when she goes to the C, she plays a little fill, which is going from the open D, and 
hammering onto that second fret. So it means that when we go from the G like that, yes, hopefully the sound you're gonna get, you have to make sure that you hammer on that first finger quite hard so that it stands out and you can hear it with the rest of the chord like that. And that's the only thing that I can see that Nancy's doing as well as the sus fours and the sus twos. She's just throwing that in on the C. Like that. Before then going over to the D. So let me mention at this point as well, Nancy playing and singing at the same time, doubling the difficulty, but having that instrumental ability. And especially when you get into playing fingerstyle and singing at the same time, it is a lot more complicated and it takes a lot of practice to get that subconscious. But Nancy has that ability. And when we're talking about other songs, when she's performing live, Love of the Five and Dime, you might have seen some performances of hers playing fingerstyle with the open string tuning as well to B flat major, I believe, and throwing in a little harmonic in there. Nancy does have a lot of technique on the fretboard, which will fly under the radar, especially when you're listening to her voice and that vocal delivery, which just on its own is so unique because you'll see that when we enter this first verse, when she sings the word radio, that is dead straight and it's dead on pitch, but there's no manipulation of that note whatsoever. There's no application of vibrato, no stylization, but that is the point. Sometimes Nancy sings a straight note and it is perfectly straight and on pitch, but then sometimes she'll introduce a little bit of vibrato in there for a little bit of expression. I thought I'd quickly cue it to that point just so you can hear how straight the word radio is in this vocal phrase and have a listen to this. The riddle in guides my hands to the radio. Perfectly straight on pitch absolutely hitting it between the eyes with the pitch accuracy, but no manipulation of that note. So let me now cue up the chorus and we can hopefully hear the difference between that straight note that we just heard, but also the way that Nancy uses vibrato in the chorus. When you can't find a fringe to gather Can you make out that little wobble that's in there? The oh, listen to the radio. Uh, uh, uh. It's a tiny wobble in there. It's really subtle. It's not like going ah uh, and having a wide vibrato. It's quite fast as well, frequency wise. But that tiny little wobble of radio. Uh, uh, you might be able to just hear it in there, but it sets it apart from what she's just sung in the verse. So there's a little bit more expression within the chorus, just a tiny detail, and just a way that Nancy's applying her vocal to give you a bit of light and shade in those techniques between the verse and the chorus. Another thing to mention is the fact this is totally live, and it's so refreshing to see a live performance from a great singer-songwriter with a great band as well. And these things that happen live that aren't scripted, and we have a moment like this with Nancy where she just goes to flip up into her head voice and it's going to sound like a bit of a yodel but the note isn't quite there when she flips up into her head voice so she has a little turn around and a laugh to the band because they all know that it's not quite as was planned in rehearsals but this is the point and it's so great to see this kind of thing because you also get an appreciation of the rapport between the artist and the band and I have cued it to this point so we can just have a little listen because I love it when this kind of thing happens. Looking for a supper, wondering what's up to come of me. I got a double 018 of my guitar in the backseat of the car. And there we have it. It's a tiny little moment, but you can see in Nancy's face, the way that she looks up and down, she's saying visually, what happened there? Just a little flip up into that head voice, but it's great. That is what live music is all about. Everybody's human and you can tell how comfortable Nancy is there, just having a laugh and just continuing like a true professional. But I think these kind of moments, don't really happen nowadays because there is so much 
backing track. There's so many mimed performances. Everything just sounds A1 and perfect like a studio take because it is the studio take that you're listening to. So just to bring into the spotlight the range that we've got going on here from Nancy, and the low note that she hits is down at an E3, and you can hear that in her voice, it does sound like she's right down there at the lower end of her range, and then when she gets to the octave above, the E4, it sounds a lot more comfortable, and she does actually go up to an A4, so she's got quite a range in there. We're talking about well over an octave, and I always say about the great singers, how they've got that ability to take their range from one octave to the next, and you're not really aware of that change because of the tonal consistency. That is something that Nancy definitely has. Interestingly, when I was looking at some interviews, but also just her talking voice, she is very softly spoken. So she's not connecting her vocal cords in the same way as when she sings, as she does when she talks. She just puts a little bit more air through that vocal cord coordination when she talks. And it's interesting because when she starts to sing, she gets that diaphragm going. She's now leaning on the diaphragm to bring those chords closer together, pressed up against each other, get a really good connection, and just project her voice a little bit more. Another thing I noticed is that when Nancy was talking, her natural speaking voice sits in and around E flat four. So in the chorus here, we're around E four, so just a note higher, which means that you're not going to hear her straining because she would normally be talking in this range. What is impressive is that E three that I mentioned earlier, because that's an octave below where she normally talks. And just give that a go yourself. Just take a note that you are talking in and hit an octave below that. It is impressive if you can do that. And Nancy has such a wide range going down as well as up. I don't want this video to go on for too long, but just to finish with a little bit of background on Nancy, she's got that mix of country and folk that she refers to as folkabilly. That's the genre that she describes it as. And she's one of those singer-songwriters who has written so many songs that have been covered by other artists and have turned into big successes for other artists. And one of those was Love at the Five and Dime. That's the song that I mentioned earlier in this video. That was released in 1986. And that was Kathy Matea who released that one, had a huge hit with it. Also, just to mention that Nancy was the first artist to release From a Distance, and that's written by Julie Gold. And that was in 1987. And then three years later in 1990, Bette Midler did her version of that and had a monster hit with that song. Another example would be Outbound Plane, released in 1991 by Susie Vargas. Her cover version of that song was a huge hit, and it was co-written by Tom Russell. And in 1993, Nancy did pick up a Grammy, but this was for her covers album, and that was called Other Voices, Other Rooms. And this just included songs of artists that she was inspired by. She released six albums in the 1990s, and being such a respected singer, songwriter, and musician, she came collaborated with many different artists, too many to mention here, but Emmy Lou Harris was in there, Willie Nelson, Don McLean, John Prine, the list goes on and on. And getting into the 2000s, unfortunately, she had a bit of a writer's block from 2005 until about 2009. But having said that, she still released four albums in the 2000s. That album in 2009 was called The Loving Kind, and she did some touring in 2011, and her backing band, The Kennedys, they had a studio which basically they packed up and moved into Nancy's home. And following this, the next album release was in 2012, and that's called Intersection. But it's great to have a look back at Nancy here in the late 80s with the full band, but also just showing the grassroots of music, just picking up an instrument, learning to play it to a sufficient level where you can accompany yourself, make it subconscious and sing at the same time and write your own songs, have that originality going on. So it's just a great all round package. But thank you guys for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!